Beneath the glamorous exterior of Hong Kong lies a harsh truth, the complicated dream of having your own house. According to the annual Demographia International Housing Affordability Survey, Hong Kong was titled the most expensive place for housing for the seventh time in a row. We also did the math and realized that if someone makes $50,000 per year, their housing will take around $900,000. Now, that isn't something very affordable, right? The lingering question, however, remains, why? Is it Hong Kong's sparkly skyscrapers or the city's soaring demand for limited space? In this video, we will explore what makes housing in Hong Kong so expensive. Stay tuned because you are in for quite some surprises. Why is Hong Kong so expensive? Hong Kong is the fourth most crowded place globally, squeezing over 7 million folks into a space about the size of 1,106 square kilometers that's smaller than many cities. It's crazy, expensive housing situations boil down to a classic case of insufficient houses and too many people wanting them. Everyone wants to live and work in this financial hotspot. Plus, it's a gateway to super populated China. But here's the catch. There is not much land left for new houses. Whatever little space is left is controlled by the government and they quietly sell it to developers who build homes and offices. These developers, especially from mainland China, pay crazy amounts of money for the land. Recently, Two Chinese companies paid a mind-boggling $2.17 billion for a piece of land, almost 50% more than people thought it was worth. Now, here's the tricky part. Nearly half of all homes in Hong Kong were managed by the government and given to lower-income families. That means only about half of the houses are up for grabs in the regular market. Here's another twist. Hong Kong makes a lot of money from selling land. Because of this, their taxes are low. If house prices drop, the government loses out on cash, so they are not keen on making houses more affordable. If prices fall too much, the whole tax system might need a makeover. In a nutshell, the higher cost of living in Hong Kong isn't just about people wanting houses. It's like a puzzle where the pieces are money, land, and a whole lot of demand. Hong Kong housing costs in comparison to other cities. Getting a home in Hong Kong can cost you a small fortune. For around 10 to 12 million HKD, USD 1.2 to 1.5 million, you might land a new two-bedroom apartment in Kai Tak or Tsu and Wan or an older three-bedroom one in Sai Wan Ho. The more recent spots even throw in cool extras like a clubhouse, gym, or an outdoor pool, while older buildings might give you more space and higher ceilings. Ingrid Che from Hong Kong Research breaks it down. If you have HKD 10 to 12 million in spare, you're looking at a primary place, maybe two bedrooms in a not so central part of Hong Kong. Surprisingly, less than half of the households in Hong Kong can afford this. Developers are coping with the higher prices by building smaller units to keep them somewhat affordable. Now, compare this to other big cities globally with the same budget, USD 1.2 to 1.5 million. Around the world, homes come with different price tags. In London, a lovely one-bedroom spot in fancy areas is 1 million pounds, HKD 10.2 million. A bit further, for 1 million pounds, you can get a two-bedroom apartment in a tall, fancy building. In Chicago, a regular condo costs about $438,000, while a standalone house costs around $466,000 on average. With a budget of 1.2 to 1.5 million USD, you can check out stylish condos or even roomier standalone homes. Berlin, for 600,000 to 700,000 euros, you can grab a three bedroom, 1,000 square foot pad. Tokyo's got luxury too. A 10 million HKD, USD 1.2 million in Shibuya brings you a cool one to two bedroom, 800 square foot place. In Choku, a three bedroom, 900 square foot spot costs around 8 million HKD, USD 1 million. Lastly, in a Boston seaport district, a 700 square foot, one bedroom place is around USD 1.15 million. Thus, it could be said that your money stretches more in these cities than in Hong Kong. Is it possible to buy a house in Hong Kong? 
Before we answer this question, let us tell you a little story about Vanessa Young, a 20-year-old Hong Kong student. She lives in a tiny apartment with her parents and younger brother, who regularly sleeps on the sofa. Vanessa dreams of moving out with her boyfriend. However, the reality of Hong Kong's sky-high rents is holding her back. Even for a 500-square-foot apartment, Miss Young finds 200 square feet more realistic due to unaffordable rents. This struggle is shared by many Hong Kong youth as owning a home seems like an impossible dream. Majority of Hong Kong young locals lack confidence in affording a home without parental help. The high costs affect not only buying but also renting. Even young working adults of Hong Kong find it challenging to pay the rent since it's usually half of their monthly income. And for those who manage to secure a home, there are other challenges. Survey shows that a lot of residents have to settle for small, confined apartments because additional space demands hefty cash deposits. At the heart of the issue is the mismatch between rising home prices and stagnant wage growth. Dennis Ma from JLL Hong Kong notes that housing prices have doubled since 1997, far outpacing wage growth. Despite a temporary price drop, young Hong Kongers lack confidence in their ability to afford homes in the long run. Many blame the government and property developers for the social inequality and homelessness issues. Public housing, touted as an alternative, faces long waiting times and eligibility criteria, pushing some youth into jobs they dislike to earn enough. Frustration over housing affordability is a significant factor fueling protests and a desire among young Hong Kongers to leave the city. The familiar feeling is that only with changes, such as universal suffrage, can Hong Kong address its housing crisis and other social issues. Ms. Young believes an elected chief executive would push the government to formulate policies to improve the situation. Despite the challenges, leaving Hong Kong is not easy for many young residents who consider it their home. So, is it possible to buy a house in Hong Kong? Honestly, not for many. Hong Kong's micro-apartments and the struggle for space. In Hong Kong, where the average person has a meager 161 square feet to call home, architects like Gary Chang are redefining compact living. Chang's childhood home, a 300 square foot apartment that once housed his entire family, symbolizes innovation. Through ingenious design featuring sliding panels, Chang transformed his cramped living space into a high-tech marvel with over two dozen configurations. Hong Kong's housing crisis extends beyond creativity, pushing some of its poorest residents into dire conditions. Cage or coffin homes, often stacked two or three high, are a reality for around 80 to 200,000 people. These tiny units, framed out of wood or chicken wire, lead to health issues such as respiratory problems and infections due to overcrowding and poor ventilation. Facing these challenges, architects and designers in Hong Kong are exploring solutions for maximizing living space. Microhouses made of bamboo, exhibited by Effect T, serve as a template for high-quality temporary housing for those in transitional living situations. These two-story units are affordable, easy to assemble, and could relieve the city's housing crisis. Hong Kong's creative micro-living ideas gained global notice, but doing the same thing in the U.S. has challenges. In Hong Kong, public spaces are vital, letting people expand their living beyond home limits. However, this idea encounters problems in the U.S., where public spaces aren't used as much as in Hong Kong. As Hong Kong grapples with its housing crisis, questions arise about the limits of small space living. Even in a city accustomed to compact conditions, concerns emerge. Billionaire developer Li Ka Shing's sub 200 square foot micro apartments, retailing for around US $250,000, have drawn criticism for their size. Yet, 400 of the first 492 apartments sold on the very first day, showcasing the complexities of addressing Hong Kong's housing challenges. And that was our take on the truth behind Hong Kong's glamour and the lost hope of ownership of its citizens. Ranked the priciest city for seven consecutive years, the city suffers from an affordability crisis. What is your take on Hong Kong's escalated housing prices? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe for more global insights.